Whether it's broadcast news or print journalism or photojournalism, we come across these stories oftentimes and, and we get a snapshot of these things. That's what hard news does for us. It gives us kind of a snapshot of what's happening here. It tells us the who, what, where, when of these things, gives us the details and just the, you know, the straight up objective facts. This is what happened. This is who was involved and uh, this is where it took place and so forth. But oftentimes, I mean, we, we could look at a picture like this and still not really have the full context. I mean, what is happening here? You know, exactly um, what are the reasons behind this? We don't necessarily always get the why and the how from quote unquote hard journalism from these, you know, straight up objective um, factual reports. So sometimes for a little more depth and just for a little more humanity in some of these things, whether it's something serious like this or a little more fun profile or whatever, we want the why and the how we want the full context. We want the full color or background of that story. And that's not really what hard news does. That's where we rely on what we call feature articles. So in this video, we're going to talk just a moment about feature articles, what they are, how they're useful and uh, specifically how they may be helpful in a public relations context. And so, um, first of all, feature articles, a feature article is just a news story with greater depth than traditional quote unquote hard news stories. It goes beyond the basic facts to provide further context and color. Like I said, it, it, it gives a little more background, a little it gives a broader picture, not just the basic facts, the who, what, where and why or how, but uh, but the why, the how, the, the depth behind this. Or like I say, it could just be a little more uh, I, I hate to use the word fluff, but it could be a little more fluffy than a traditional news article. Sometimes we need a little levity, a little lightness, and we and we want to know more about the the people in the world, the celebrities around us, and and so forth, or the background of a story. Feature articles allow us to to do that. They they give us that that color, that background. Okay. So now, what does this have to do with public relations? How could this be helpful to us in public relations? Um, so uh, we could use uh, feature articles for a lot of different reasons. And, and just a few of the main ones here, as you can see, uh, we use feature articles to raise the profile of a client. So in other words, to introduce them to the public or help the public get to know them, uh, either that person or that organization or that cause or whatever it is. We, we use feature articles to increase public understanding of those things. So to fill in gaps, maybe they're not well known by the public or maybe the public's not well informed about this person or this topic. So we use feature articles for that so we can really fill in those gaps, provide a lot more information than we can in a traditional news article. We use it sometimes to change the perception of the subject of an article, whether again, that's a person or an organization or just a topic or cause. We use it to change the perception of how people see that person or that issue or whatever. We, we allow them to see a different side of uh, that, that person or that issue and so forth. And, and so we, uh, we use it to change the perception of how people might see that person or that thing, that, that organization, whatever it is. And sometimes we use it to just reach new articles. If you're somebody who, you know, you, you, uh, your topic is typically something that's covered in like uh, the more traditional hard news outlets and, and, uh, in brief forms like that, maybe there are people who don't really read that kind of thing. So you may try and get a feature article into, you know, into people or into good housekeeping or whatever it is so that you can reach audiences that might not normally see things to do with your organization. And, and so they can have a new understanding. You can reach new people that way. So again, variety of reasons why we might use a feature article in public relations, but it can be a really powerful tool. It is important to understand that features are different than traditional news. So um, let's talk for a minute about how they are different and what's different about feature articles than a more traditional uh, hard news item. So feature articles are typically longer. Can they provide more depth, more context, more color? And, and as a result of that, they usually are longer, more than a few column inches that you might get in the newspaper. Feature articles typically are a couple of pages maybe. And so that provides a lot more um, room for that kind of discussion and that kind of context. So they're typically longer than um, a traditional news article. They are uh, the, the lead in a and feature article is typically delayed. So when we talked about leads in hard news items, right? More traditional quote unquote news items, hard news items. We said the leads got to really just get everything out there at once. All the details, all the pertinent facts really have to be there in the lead. In a feature, you're kind of pushing that back a little bit. You're trying to draw the audience in a little bit more. So you may put in a little suspense or a little mystery 
into that lead. You're going to, you're going to stretch things out a little bit more in the lead. You're not in a rush to get all these facts out there. So the lead is a little bit delayed. Things are delayed in the lead a little bit. Uh, you're going to see more quotes and anecdotes and things like that. Um, again, more background, more context in a feature article than you would in a traditional hard news art article. Um, could, because there's more room for that. There's more expectation of that. There's more, you know, stories about how did you get to this place and what's the reasoning behind all of this. And so uh, you're going to see more things like quotes and anecdotes and, um, and not just in such a rush to get to these, the, the specific main data points and things like that. You're going to see a lot more context around that. And you're going to see more greater, you're going to see a greater emotional pull in future articles. That's kind of the idea of a feature article is to connect with people at an emotional level to tug at their heartstrings. Uh, hard news is more about getting to people's heads, right? It's about, it's about reaching them logically and, and providing them with the facts. Feature articles are more about tugging at the heartstrings and really um, connecting with them on a human level, on an emotional level, right? and, and putting some um, personification behind these ideas and this person or whatever. So, um, so you're going to see greater emotional pool. And the feature articles are about showing rather than telling. A hard news article is about telling the audience, this is what happened. These are the facts and that's it. Features are more about showing. It's about painting that picture. It's about painting that full picture, not just providing the bare details and saying, this is what happened. It's about showing us and, and allowing the audience to, and the reader to really experience that for themselves and to understand what it was like to be there or what it's like to know that person on a, in a different way or whatever it is. So you're really showing the audience rather than just telling them what happened. You're showing them what it's like to, what it was like to be there or to know that person or to, to be that person or whatever it is. Okay. So we're showing in a feature article rather than just telling as we do it in, in a hard news item. So features are different in some significant ways than more traditional news items. Now the structure of a feature, I, I sometimes I, I like to compare this to a, a, like a roller coaster, a feature article is like a roller coaster, right? Uh, it's because we start with the lead. If you're, if you're familiar with, and I love roller coasters. So if you start, if you're starting with the lead, the lead is like going up that lift hill, right? On the roller coaster, that's slow. If you've been on a roller coaster, you know that it just slowly clicking up that lift hill as you're kind of leaning back and you're starting to question your decisions in life and thinking, what am I doing on here? And it seems to take forever. I mean, that lift hill sometimes is as long as the rest of the ride uh, combined, right? So you've got lots of time to think about that's the lead in a feature article. It's slow. It's a slow build. And you've got the audience thinking about well, what is this about? Where is this going? And you're really trying to pique their interest, pique their curiosity, and really hook them in that way. So the lead is that slow build, like that slow climb up the lift hill of the roller coaster. But at a certain point, you're going to get to the top of that hill, right? And you're going to need to, in this article, have a, a focus statement, right? That says, okay, now here is what we're doing here. This is what this is all about. So one very clear thesis statement, clear uh, statement that says, this is what this article is about. This is the journey we're about to take. So you're at the top of that lift on the roller coaster. You're able to see everything that's coming in the future, right? And your life is flashing before your eyes or whatever, but you get that moment of, of clarity where you're like, oh, okay, here's what we're doing before we get on that, on that rush of this, uh, of this ride. That's the focus statement. We've had this slow build in the lead. We need that singular focus statement to say, okay, this is what this is about. So at the end of the lead, you're going to have that focus statement that's going to kind of push us into um, the body of the article. But in between there, we've got what we call the nut graph. And if you're familiar with the, if you've watched the other videos, you know, the nut graph is just the, it's, it's a paragraph where we put the nuts and bolts in and, and say, okay, this is kind of the transition. This is where we're going with this. And this is, these are the key elements that you need to be on the lookout for. This is the real transition into the body, right? So as we're going down that first hill of the, the first drop of the roller coaster after the lift hill, right? That's the nut graph. This is leading us into the rest of it. So now we're building up speed and we're getting ready to push into that body. And when we get into the body, that's where you're going to provide that color. That's where you're painting that picture. You're providing all of the context with the different quotes and anecdotes and, and just information that, that fills in all that stuff, all the things you don't have room for in a traditional news article. The wonder of a feature is that you can include all of that into this article. And they have room for everything. It's not a novel, right? But you can really expand a great deal and paint a picture for the audience. Again, show them. Don't just tell them what's happened, what happened, but show them. What does that mean? What does that like? Fill in all of those gaps um, for the audience in the body. That's what, that's what you're doing there. Okay? 
and it's some points in the body you may have those uh those those uh, uh the uh the the the, the um the my brain is, is failing me right now. You may have the loops, right? You may have the loops like you do in a, in a roller coaster that provide that interest, or maybe it's a barrel like you do on the roller coaster, but oftentimes anymore, it seems to be a loop. So that's where you're going to be throwing in these different, you know, what are the complications, the struggles, that does, the decisions that had to be made? This is all still part of the body, but, you know, providing that those tension points um, for the audience. You know, typically, it's not all, you know, rainbows and unicorns and these types of things. You're writing about this because... A lot of times somebody's had a struggle or something that, that they've an obstacle that they've had to overcome a decision that they a tough decision that they've had to make. Um, and that's what you're really trying to convey and throughout the body here. You're going to have these different loops around here and how did they come out of them then? Right. So, so be sure you build that tension in the body, but then also demonstrate, you know, fill in those gaps and, and provide that color as to how they overcame these things, how they made these decisions and what were those decisions. Right. So, so at different points in the body, you're going to have then these areas, these points of, of uh, uh, expressing that struggle and, and, and really um, uh, explaining that tension and then relieving that tension wherever, wherever it came out, if it did. Okay. Then finally, at the end, you're going to get to the conclusion, right? You're going to need to wrap things up uh, in some ways. You're going to have a conclusion. And oftentimes in a feature article, you have what's called a circle kicker, meaning something that you started in the lead a story that you began there or a statistic that you shared there or something, you're going to come back to that in the conclusion. It's a very common um, uh, you know, strategy for a conclusion in a feature article is to uh, circle back to the lead with that circle kicker and talk then about this is how you know that particular story resolved or wrapped up or whatever to, to, to come back to that one particular thing. So you're going to have to wrap it up somehow and provide that summary, provide that conclusion, but then also consider you need to be thinking about this in advance what kind of circle kicker can i use what can i start in the lead and then refer back to in the conclusion a couple best best practices to remember when we're writing feature articles in particular first you want to lean into the lead the lead is critically important in a feature article in a different way than it is in again a hard news article hard news article it's all about getting those facts out there as quickly as possible and as clearly as possible in that lead article but in a feature article, it's different. As I said, first of all, you have to do a couple of different things here. First, you have to, you have to lay the foundation for what's coming. So you have to give the audience a heads up as to what you're going to be talking about in that article and, uh, and lay the foundation for what is to come in that article. That's important. You also have to have something in the lead that, that hooks the audience that really pulls them in, gives them a reason to continue uh, reading or listening, watching, whatever uh, format this is in. So you need something there that is of enough interest that it hooks the audience a little bit. And so you've got to provide that foundation and hook the audience. But then, as I said before, you also have to be thinking about that circle kicker. What can I use in the lead that I can then refer back to in the conclusion to kind of tie this all together? So when you're putting the lead together, you really have to put a lot of thought into how you can accomplish all of these things in that lead article okay? in that lead paragraph or two. So lean into the lead, put your time and energy into that. It's a very important part of any feature article. You need to be descriptive. As we've mentioned a couple times now, you have to be descriptive. You need to show, not tell. Right? In the words of the famous author Anton Chekhov, don't tell me the moon is shining. Show me the glint of light on broken glass. So you can imagine, I mean, we can picture that. I can just say to you, the moon is shining, or we could show you that. I, even if, with a description of words by talking about how the moon is the light, that glint of light on a broken glass. I mean, you're both kind of saying the same thing. So again, it's kind of the difference here between saying the snow fell, as opposed to saying the snow whipped the girl's hair, icicles clinging where it blew past her ears, but she hardly noticed she had eyes only for the world around her. The once boring street turned into a winter wonderland, right? So in a hard news article, we would say the snow fell. That's it. We want the facts. We want to be as, as, as dis, you know, concise as possible. But in a feature article, we're going to provide that context, that color, and that additional, um, you know, uh, showing rather than just telling. OK, 
Okay, So we need to be descriptive. In order to do that, in order to be descriptive, we're going to employ literary devices. You need to think a little bit like an author. Okay, So we don't want to think all the time like a journalist here. We want to think a little bit like an author, like somebody who's writing a book. It wouldn't be a very good book if we just said the snow fell. You need those literary devices. So we're talking here about things like metaphor, simile, alliteration, personification, all of these things, onomatopoeia, these things, these different literary devices that we can use that we would, <clears throat> in a hard news story, we would probably not go to because we want, again, to be as clear and concise as possible. But in a feature article, we want to employ these different literary devices to make it more interesting for the the reader or the audience member and in, in order to can be able to more effectively show them and not just tell them so don't be afraid to employ some of these literary devices another author tony lara said people add color to their story because they think it happened in black and white and we do this a lot we we uh, we remember something we we think it happened in black and white but we go back and we add color to these things and so in a feature article, we want to do that for our audience members. When we're thinking about a feature article, we need to remember that we don't want to just provide it for them in black and white. There is a place for that, certainly in hard news, right? but in features, we need to shift our thinking away from that black and white and into providing color for all these people. And, and in the service of our, uh, our client, our organization, our campaign, or, or whatever it is we are pursuing there. If you have questions about um, about writing feature articles or how best to do that, and I can do that, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope that this has provided you with some perspective on the difference between writing feature articles compared to writing um, hard news articles, um, and because they both have an important place, but they both are uh, very different and have different uses in the world of public relations.